Okay, today we're going to focus on graphing quadratic functions. So first of all, I want you to use your graph later and put a few um, graphs in there. y equals 2x squared plus 2x, y equals 2x squared plus 4x, and y equals 2x squared plus 6x. And it's going to work a lot better if you actually do this and try to make some patterns. So here's my graphing calculator. I put all three equations in there. I only want to look at one at a time. So you can highlight just that equal sign. And then if I look at graph, there's my y equals 2x squared plus 2x graph. Okay. And then if I want to make sure I know what the next one is, my y equals 2x squared plus 4x, um, I can go back there and I can go right here to this equal sign and hit enter and turn it back on because I turned it off. And if I look to that graph, you can see it shows up. Oh, it popped to the left. Okay. And then I'm going to look at the other one too for the last one. Um, so I'll turn that one on. Y equals 2x squared plus 6x. Okay. And turn it on and look at the graph. And there we go. It looks like it pops even further to the left. So um, I want you to notice that we didn't have any graphs that had a b component in them, which is the coefficient of x. Today, what it's, how did it seem to affect the graph to you? I hope that you were noticing that it seemed to shift your graph. In our case, this time it kept shifting it left, the bigger that value was. Um, the axis of symmetry, if you look at the axis of symmetry for each of your graphs, we, to get that on the get graphing calculator, I would probably want to look at one graph at a time again. Um, and we'll just do it for, let's say, the first one for now. So I'll turn these other two off again. Um, but to look at the axis of symmetry, I hope you remember that the minimum was along the axis of symmetry, or the maximum was along the axis of symmetry. So if you go to second calc and you ask to calculate the minimum value, of your graph. What you want to do, it says left bound, what you need to do is arrow over to a point that you're pretty sure is left of the minimum and then you can hit enter. And then it says right bound and then you'll arrow over to a point that's right of the minimum and you'll hit enter. And then it will ask you to make a guess so you say guess. And it looks like our minimum is about at negative 0.4999 and negative 0.5, about there. It's making its best guess. So about negative a half, negative a half, okay? Um, negative 0.5 is my line of symmetry here, okay? And I'm not sure if you can do this on your own, but for the next two, it would be x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 1.5. So it kept shifting a little bit left based on our pattern. So I think this is a, you can try to come up with a relationship between. I think it's pretty hard for students to notice on their own. But here's what the relationship is. Um, the axis of symmetry is always at this line. x equals negative b over 2a. Definitely write this. You will certainly need to know that in your notes. So, um, so whenever we're looking for our axis of symmetry, we want to do negative b divided by 2a. That's going to give us the axis of symmetry, where our parabola is sym symmetrical. Um, the x-coordinate of the vertex, so remember the vertex is going to be, you know, that maximum or minimum point. It's always going to be on that line of symmetry. So the x-coordinate of the vertex, hey, it's just the same thing as the axis of symmetry equation, x equals negative b over 2a. The y-coordinate of the vertex is the value of y when x equals negative b over 2a, which means we need to, when we have our value of x, we plug it in and then solve for y. Okay, so we're going to graph some equations here, and you'll kind of see some, <clears throat> some strategies. I'm going to give you a lot of tips, and then I'll show how you, how you can use them. I'm going to go through the tips quickly. But if I ask you to graph a function like this, y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 3 without a calculator, here are some tips. The first thing you want to do is find the vertex. So remember, we're going to use that x equals negative b over 2a thing to find that line. Then you're going to find the y-intercept, okay? And hopefully you just remember that's the value of c. Then you'll want to reflect your y-intercept across the axis of symmetry and make a smooth curve. So I'll show you what this looks like in an example. So if I have this equation, y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 3, the first thing I want you to do is 
solve for that axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a. So here we go. Negative b, so b is 4, so negative 4 over 2a, 2 times 2, so negative 4 over 4, negative 1. So negative 1, x equals negative 1, that's my axis of symmetry. If I want to find my vertex, it's going to be along that line. So what I'm trying to do is find out when x equals negative 1, um, what does y equal? So I'm going to plug in negative 1 for x. So I'm going to do 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 3. So here it looks like 2 times 1 is 2 plus 4 times negative 1, so that's a minus 4 minus 3. So I've got negative 2 minus 3. It looks like negative 5 is my y coordinate of my vertex. So that means I have this order pair, negative 1, negative 5, it's my vertex. Okay. So vertex, negative 1, negative 5, I'm going to plot it on my graph. Okay, if you look back to the left, or just rewind or whatever, you're going to see that the next step is find your y-intercept. So y-intercept, that's always the value whenever x is 0. So that would become 0, that would become 0, and we just have oops, negative 3 there. So my y-intercept is at negative 3. Okay, and that's just the value of c there. And then when it says reflect the y-intercept across the axis of symmetry, so here's that axis of symmetry at x equals negative 1. If I reflect it, I notice my y-intercept is one point away on the right, or one unit away on the right. So I'm going to plot it one unit away on the left. And now I've got three points, okay, and I'm going to connect them with a smooth curve to create my little parabola, okay? So in a nutshell, if you don't want to make a full table of values or something like that, this is a great way to only do three points, um, and you really almost always want your vertex. So, you try this one on your own and then just check it with me and see if you got it right. So y equals negative 0.5x squared plus 2x plus 3. So again, first step I want to find if x equals negative b over 2a, I want to find my axis of symmetry. So that's going to be negative 2 over 2 times negative 0.5, which equals negative 2 over negative 1, which equals 2. Okay, so it looks like my axis of symmetry is on x equals 2. So here I'm going to do that little dashed line because I know that's where I'm going to be folding my graph. Now I'm going to find my vertex. So I want to find the y-coordinate on my vertex if x equals 2. So I'm going to plug that in here. So I'm going to do negative 0.5 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 3. So 2 squared is 4 times negative a half is negative 2, plus 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3. So I've got 2 plus 3, oh, I get 5. Okay, so I'm going to put the point x equals 2, y equals 5, that's that ordered pair, 2, 5. That's going to go on my graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put a dot, that's my vertex right there. Okay, my y-intercept then, that's just the value of c here positive 3, so there's my y-intercept, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and now if I'm reflecting here, so my y-intercept, I'll put 3. Um, reflecting, you can notice from here to the line of symmetry, it goes over 2. So I want to reflect it 2 over on the line of symmetry, 2 more. And you can notice this time it looks like I have a downward-facing parabola. I'm going to connect my points. And it should be facing down because we have that negative value for A. So if I didn't, I would have gotten it wrong. So this is what your graph looks, should look like, and we can see what um, if you got it right. All right, let's think about a word problem. Okay, suppose a particular star is projected from an aerial firework at a starting height of 610 feet with an initial upward velocity of 88 feet per second. How long will it take for the star to reach, reach its maximum height? How far above the ground will it be? So we're giving you this formula. Okay, and I want you to think about it like this. Here's the star. It's getting projected, and it's coming down, okay, like this. You're looking for its maximum height. What I hope you notice here is that the maximum height is going to be along the axis of symmetry. In fact, it's going to be at the vertex, okay, because this is going to look like a parabola. Um, so we're going to use this formula and see if we can get it. So first of all, I need to plug in everything I know. So... V is my initial 
velocity that will be plugged in here, okay, see my starting height, that's going to go here. So I'm going to have the new formula, h equals negative 16 t squared plus v, which is the um, 88 t plus 610. Okay, so the first thing, how long will it take for the star to reach its maximum height? That's second. So time is going to be on this axis and height is going to be on this axis. So I'm going to look for my x coordinate of my vertex or my axis of symmetry. So in this case, I will do negative, again, I want to do negative b over 2a. So I want to do negative 88 over 2 times negative 16. That would be my first step. So negative 88 over 32. Sorry, negative 88 over a negative 32. I forgot that negative sign. Um, it's going to give me 2.75. So that first question, how long will it take the star to reach its maximum height? It looks like it's taking 2.75 seconds to get to that maximum height. If I want to find what that maximum height is, I'm going to take my value for time after 2.75 seconds and plug it in for t and see if I can solve it. So this is going to be simply a matter of plugging it in, negative 16 times 2.75 squared plus 88 times 2.75 plus 610, okay, and we can do calculator races here, but um, I'm not that quick on it, <laughs> plus 88 times 2.75 plus 610. So I'm getting a value of 731, and that's a height, and since I'm measuring in feet per second, it's going to be 731 feet up. So this firework is going to be at this point would be 2.75, 731. That's how I would ever get 731 feet. Okay. Um, to, you are also going to cover quadratic inequalities in this lesson, okay? And definitely the part about graphing the line is the hardest part, or the, actually not the line, but the parabola. And then that shading stuff, you have to remember it's nothing new, but just recall. So we'll do the same process here. We're going to pretend it's an e equation and do negative b, so negative 6 over 2a, 2 times negative 1. Negative 6 over negative 2 is 3. So it looks like my x coordinate of my vertex is 3. And then if I plug that in, I'm going to have the opposite of 3 squared plus 6 times 3 minus 5. Okay, and then that's going to be negative 9 plus 18 minus 5. So I've got 9 minus 5. It looks like the y coordinate of my vertex is 4. So my x, my x axis of symmetry is x equals 3. And it looks like the coordinates of my vertex are at the point 3, 4. Okay. And then I'm going to do my um, y-intercept. So that looks like it's right here at negative 5. So go down 5. And notice it's 3 away from our line of symmetry this time. So I'm going to go 3 away on the other side. Should be here. And then I'm just going to have to look at that. y is greater than it. So it should not have a solid line, it should have a dashed line because it's not an or equal to. So I'm going to dash this line here, but I'm still making a parabola. Okay, dashed line, parabola. And it looks like that is a greater than, so I should be shading everything that's above that parabola. Okay? All right, if you can try one more of these on your own, you'll probably be in good shape. So if I ask you to graph y is greater, less than or equal to 2x squared plus 6x minus 1. So again, you'd start off negative b over 2a. So negative 6 over 2 times 2, get negative 4. So that is going to be my axis of symmetry at x equals negative 4. Okay, and I'm going to have to, oh, what did I do? Sorry, negative 6 over 4, negative 1.5. Prof uh, profuse apologies. Definitely not going to want that bad example. So negative 1.5 is just going to be like this. Okay, and then we're going to plug in negative 1.5 and solve this whole thing. Um, so let me just do that really quick. When I plug that in, I get y equals 3.5. So I'm going to plot the graph negative 1.5, 3.5. It looks like it's right about there for my vertex. My y-intercept's at negative 1, 
put it here, one and a half over, reflect, one and a half over. This time I'm going to